Welcome to Back Talk. Welcome to Back Talk, episode 39. Um, we're back. It's uh, We don't have C. Rich this week because he had to go take care of some business, but I think we'll make it. It's myself, Kay. We have Ray-Ban, of course, and our becoming a regular guest, Bree. Say hey, Bree. Hi. <laughs> I'm still a guest, y'all. She's a guest for the entire show this time, though. <laughs> so but I'm I, excited. Right. So Bree has a way of, like, turning me up in a good way so if i'm lit this entire show blame her okay and you're outnumbered right then so it's the shy day. it's not no outnumbered <laughs> it's the shy day it gets it. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> all right so yesterday was mother's day i'm not a mother but we do have a mother at the table brie how was your mother's day Oh. <laughs> oh no 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 so my mother's day was actually pretty good it's something i kind of look forward to kind of because you know you just want to feel know. that extra appreciation <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i don't know you just like to feel the extra appreciation get like get like you know take it now feel special everybody likes gifts cards did that happen flowers. it did okay did it happened for you or for your mama Let's not even talk about... Okay, so... <laughs> no, we went out to... Well, we attempted to take my mom to brunch, but everyone knows how Atlanta is during brunch. And then it was a Sunday. And then it was Mother's Day. So, yeah, that didn't quite work out. But we still found a good little barbecue spot downtown and or near Edgewood, actually. And that was really good. You know, my family is my family, and I love them, and I will oh, always Lord. love them. Sounds like you had an interesting mother. It was yeah. interesting, but it wrapped up on a good note. That's good. We got to see my other mother. Okay. And, you know, so it was fun. All right. Um, fun. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Mother's Day, unfortunately, was just another Sunday for me. Well, not unfortunately. I'm not a mom, and it's okay. Um, but it was actually my only day off for the week, so I actually went and got my nails done, got oh. a pedicure done, actually, like, rested, like, it was nice not having to rush anywhere, and the weather was nice. Mm-hmm. It was actually kind of hot. So, I mean, I called my mom and my aunts and wished them well and stuff. But, um, yeah, Mother's Day was You great. are a mother. Stop. You, 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 you the huh? mother of civilization of the earth. Oh, that's so nice. Where's my card and my gift then? You get that every day. Just go to Hallmark. <laughs> no. Just go to Hallmark. You got you. What? What you mean? Well, okay. Right. How was your Mother's Day? Right. Um, it was cool. Um, <laughs> what What did you do for the special mothers in your life? Um, took them out to eat. They had to pay for none. You feel me? Oh, so um, you treated. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, that's not the norm, so you feel me? So, you know, they got treated well. But, no, nah, it was mostly... Not the norm. Let's not just nah, go but, passive. But, no, um, nah, I mean, it was kind of... It was cool. You know, it was good to spend some time with my mom. She had a little situation, health scare, whatever. So, it yes. was good to spend so some time with her. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, you know... I feel like every day is Mother's Day. I feel like this Mother's Day would have been kind of special for you, though, because like you just said, there was like a little bit of a situation. So it didn't mean more for you this Mother's Day? I'm not a normal person. We know. Never mind. You're so, not mushy. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, so, <laughs> it don't work like that for me. But, I, but yeah, of course I care. You're appreciative you know? to be around. We'll go with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, hopefully all of you mothers who are listening, you guys had a great day, even if it was just a break from the kids or just, you know, a little something special. Um, Hopefully the people in your life, you know, made you feel special because mothers are amazing and it's an incredible job that I don't know if I could ever do. So shout out to y'all. You can. You You can do it, Kay. As a guy, mommy. But not day in, day out, 18 years plus. I don't know about that. (laughs) <laughs> but you're gonna be a stepmom to somebody, so you're right because you can't. You're find gonna a be a mother. True. I mean, I mean, a baby. You're gonna be a mother at some point. At least one. I guess that mother of civilization. Right. But All right then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. So what I want to do, I want to definitely give a shout out to a few people. Shout out to Chris James, the brother who was on our show. A while back, Chris avid James listener. Journey. Shout out to Chris James Journey. You can follow him at uh, at Chris James Journey on IG, and uh, he has a new play that's getting ready to drop. We love the uh, Dear Black People play that dropped uh, a couple months ago. I think we went and saw it. Mm-hmm. And shit was amazing, was and uh, really I'm really anticipating. Good. He has a new uh, play coming out in July 
mid-July, I believe it's between July 12th to the 15th here in Atlanta. It's called uh, Confessions of a, of a Sinner. And it looks like it's going to be uh, talking about a lot of relationships, black black relationship issues, and you know I'm kind of anxious to see it, man. He got me, he got me liking plays, bro. Wait, I've never because he's right. writing it, right? Yeah. Like when we went to that play, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Dear black people, yes, like I know it would be good because he puts on good productions, but it kind of just took it to a whole nother level. Mm-hmm. So I'm really excited about this upcoming show. Okay, any other shout outs, right there? Absolutely, man. You know I got them. <laughs> shout out to uh, Ashley Marie. Uh, that's at Ashley that's at America Beauty it's Ashley Marie Beauty she's an avid listener to the show as well she gave me a little shout out for you know going back to school getting my little you know my little degree shit on for the psychology y'all already know uh, shout out to her and also man major shout out to Chris Raven Sixth Lord uh, he's been another supporter of the show but he actually has new music dropping and I don't really look for me to be shouting somebody out on some music shit I don't normally, something. yeah, because yeah. I don't listen to SoundCloud rappers mm-hmm. like that. You know Not what I'm saying? SoundCloud rappers, <laughs> but he's actually talented. So I, I give him, I give him a shout out. That's uh, that's Chris Raven, Sixth Lord. Uh, and his mixtape is called or EP is called Rap Music. So you can find that on um, on Apple, Spotify, okay. title, and it's the number six and then Lord with an E, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to Chris Raven, man. He actually oh. talented. Follow him on Instagram. He drops little. You know, minute clips of him rapping. You can get a taste of what he's what he on. He's, he's, a, he's friend a of the show, talented right? dude. Yeah, okay. definitely. Shout out to C Rich, man. We miss you, bro. I know. I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, know. I don't miss y'all double teaming me, but I miss that. That's my yeah. brother. I miss my brother. I, I don't miss y'all double teaming my girl. But I'm, I'm keeping your seat warm for you. I don't know if it'll be here for you when you get back, but we'll see. <laughs> right. Exactly. All right. Well, shout out to everybody that's consistently showing us love, as always, to all the platforms, Twitter, IG, Facebook, hashtag, hashtag your comments with hashtag back talk. Um, send us your emails with hashtag talk back. No C. And always, you can always, as always, sorry, I cannot talk today. You can submit your anonymous questions on our Lipsy page. You can find that link on the platforms. And also, we have been posting our shows on YouTube. Um, we always put all the other platforms, but YouTube we're pushing now because it helps with the thread of the conversation. So we can actually, you know, communicate with you guys. So quick plug, communicate with us and talk back. What's good this week, right, man? So you know, speaking of mothers, you dig. We we had we had a mother get attacked. Our favorite mother, by the by, way, by you know a vicious uh, Twitter troll She's by the name of Azalea Banks. Now, I saw a lot of people, man. I I don't really. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really listen. I've never really listened to Azalea Banks outside of a song when she first came out, like three. Throw three. That. <laughs> yeah, some it was some song that it sounded like house music. I'm not really into it. Yeah. So I didn't really listen. Mm-hmm. But from what I understand, she talented, whatever, cool, whatever. But I've mostly known her for the comments that she made. And the, the things trolling. that she've said on in the past. Mm-hmm. I don't even I won't even say it's trolling because you know it's mental health month. <laughs> and she she got a look it's I mean I'm not joking like she, She's Bye. going to therapy. You feel me? That don't mean that you something's wrong with you. No, everybody needs somebody to talk to. Everybody needs therapy. That's she why I'm getting this degree. Extra. When I get it, you know, holla at me if you need some <laughs> consultation. You feel me? But, you know, one thing that I've noticed about her, she is a little off. Like, she just, she seemed to have a quick trigger. She snap on people easy. And she has a habit of attacking on a lot of women, black women mostly. Mm-hmm. But then now it's like it's weird to me seeing her in an interview kind of talking on some pro black shit or at least trying to sound that way. So it's it's strange to me. But which are, what are your thoughts, you know, on the interview as a whole? We gonna you know, we can talk about the Cardi B thing, but in whole as a whole. As a whole, so I actually um with the Breakfast Club interviews, I normally have to break it up into segments because you know we're all crazy busy. So I watched the first half of the Azalea B- Azalea Banks interview like on Friday or whatever day she's actually in there. And I was like, okay, you know, this is all before she got to talking about Cardi. I'm like, okay, maybe she's not just a troll. Like, it started to kind of, kind of had a Kanye moment. Like, oh, well, maybe she's clarifying. Uh, cool yeah. Man. What? <laughs> a Kanye moment. Well, you know how when we watched his um, 
documentary that he dropped with Charlamagne walking through the desert or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then he said this shit on TMZ so it kind of yeah. erased the whole thing. So I kind of felt similar. Like, I'm listening to Azalea and you know me, I try to have an open mind. Yeah. Hear both sides. I didn't get through it and before I could get through it, I'm hearing about her attacking Cardi B. So my like, gosh, shit. Just when I was like, maybe you're okay, I see you saying these like ridiculous statements to but like... But what was she saying about Cardi B exactly because... Um, I think she called her an illiterate and uh something rat what is it yeah. so, <laughs> that's not funny <laughs> that that's not funny so first okay. she was going on about how people have been um praising pretty much beyonce how right. you know you know how beyonce she did the whole lemonade right. thing she so shitted on beyonce in the past but yeah right. she she did she did <laughs> and Cardi B but, her out on it yeah and then she was like you know but there were really intelligent conversations going on that were centered around beyonce but then you have people like Cardi B right. and she called her a character of a black woman and that black women themselves would never be able to get away with the foolishness that she gets now, away with such as her spelling grammar yeah yeah now, I, I, now, we're going to pause right there. Now, I do agree with her on that, but this is the wrong person delivering a message to me because I, but y'all can speak on it, but I, I don't, I do agree with her on that in terms of a black woman, a, a, a you know, a dark skinned woman speaking in the way that she speaks or doing some of the answers that she's done in the past. I get it. I get the novelty of it and all that, but I feel like a black woman would not get the same leeway or she wouldn't be looked at the same in a positive light, they'll be treating her like she was on some sand bullshit. Um, I don't agree. Um, so she called her an illiterate and untalented rat. No, I disagree with that. So if Cardi B came into the industry like a bunch of other women meaning polished, we didn't know about them until we got their art, so it was presented a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yes, because when you present yourself somewhere in the beginning, we gonna hold you to that, you gotta go up from there, right? Exactly. We met Cardi B on a low level, not to bash Love and Hip Hop, but there's not a lot of expectations to Love and Hip Hop, right? Uh, uh, Je- no, Instagram. because she was before yeah, Love yeah. and Hip Hop. It was she got on Love and Hip Hop because of Instagram. She Can was hot. Okay, go ahead. So I know okay. she, I know the reason why yeah. she got on no, oh, because I need to finish the point. So I know the reason why she even got on Love and Hip Hop was because she was Instagram famous, right? But her her platform exploded on Love and Hip Hop, right? Mm-hmm. So True. the bar was low because it's Love and Hip Hop. You come on, you act a fool, whatever, and everybody loved her. Men, women, everybody. Like yeah. even if you weren't with it, it was a little bit of craziness. I mean, people were feeling her, right? Mm-hmm. So the bar is low, and then we see, we saw her journey, and I feel like the point I'm making is when you see someone journey and we felt like we really were seeing her like people relate the part of what made her brand so big was she was relatable she wasn't so polished exactly so the fact that she has this like scruffy rough image and we all watched her uh, literal gl- glow up you can't bash her for the same shit that made her glow up right i would say it's more so it's not even that she was like rough around the edges though it was she was doing like comedy it was like in the name She's of comedy funny, yeah. she was actually funny She's one of the few people who actually made me laugh like that so she was actually funny. So I, I take that back. She was fun, like she was in the vein of a comedian. So what she was doing, you can kind of give a pass to a lot of comedians for that shit, for a lot of the antics or maybe looking somewhat, you know, ignorant in their comments. But You're not gonna hold her to the same. Secret. But I would say in the same in the same light, like whenever she would talk about like certain issues on Instagram, I would hear her and she would surprise me with her intellect. She actually knows a lot of shit. She does. She actually yeah. is very informed and reads. Uh, and the fact she that reads. she say actually, that's like. I mean, no, but I'm saying in, in light of what she's saying, mm-hmm. like, no, she actually knows what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, you ask her about Bernie Sanders or something. She gave a very, you know. I, I wouldn't expect her to know Bernie Sanders' yeah, like platform. She gave an platform. informed response. And yeah, her so it, yeah. I mean, my thing is she's she's more intelligent than and even myself. Like even if just because you're intelligent, it don't mean that you got to speak any type of way. So I write I might re- write a text message and say I'm a and I know I'm I'm, I'm writing it <laughs> out <laughs> I'm a but I know come on now you know like I know the proper way to say it I'm just gonna say it the way I wanna fucking say it right so even that I mean if you ask me to get in front of the senators of the United States I can have a conversation but if I'm in front of my people I'm gonna talk how I wanna talk and Carter's whole thing is like in her response to Azalea Banks I mean she wrote this whole long post before she deleted her Instagram 
And she literally says, like, don't come for me because you confused about yourself. We all know Azalea bleached her skin. Yeah. She got the mm-hmm. implants. She just be all over the fucking place. And, and, and she's a bad witch. This is well documented. She has said some foul shit about black men and has big up white men and say how much better they are. And then whenever a white man dumps her, then she cry racism and all this other shit. So I, I don't rock with Azalea Banks. Yeah, in reference to her talking about how Cardi B speaks and writes, etc. I don't know. I'm kind of torn because a part of me understands why as black people we want to articulate ourselves and show that we have come from a place of not even being able to read mm-hmm. legally, yeah. you know, to not even knowing how to speak right. So now it's like, I'm going to show you I have come past that. So some people feel like articulation is just a way of status, a way of intelligence, right? And I can understand that. Maybe that's something that she needs to work on. Right. But don't completely like, just bash her whole, her entire being. Right. So something for me that kind of turned me around, like a lot, my god sister, shout out to Fredera she's a scholar right and most of her friends are like scholars like I mean multiple degrees world travel whatever okay and if you get around them and like hear how they talk and stuff like it just changed my perception of like the elite and educated because I thought mm-hmm. they had like a stuffiness to them they don't curse they don't use slang like no they're still regular people it's almost like not speaking for her but I feel like when they get those degrees and they spruce a certain level it's almost like I must be kind of fuck I want to I can write a whole dissertation yeah. I can write a book I can read you from A to Z but I am going to use this slang and, and I am going to use these colloquialisms you know what exactly. I mean so the real part of me is like let us be kind of fuck she wants to but then the other part of me that knows how much representation matters is like damn I get why they want her to speak a certain way but I I appreciate more that she's being her than my desire for her to be right and correct you Mm -hmm. get what I'm saying so that's why I'm like leave her alone like she's authentic which is which is something that appears to be unattainable for Mm Azalea and really all we see is how she presents herself on social media and when Mm -hmm. she does these interviews we don't know how she's conducting her business we don't know how she's talking to these people that she's trying to get deals with and all this other stuff she could be the most intelligent person in the freaking world Mm -hmm. Uh, but she has to keep up this image of how she is and if she doesn't feel like it's something that she needs to change and if her PR people, her management they don't feel like hey we need you to change your image Mm -hmm. why? Right. She's doing good and like I said this was her come up literally exactly <laughs> it, it, I, don't, I don't know Betty, yeah, if, if people if the people following her don't find a reason to check her on it then it ain't no issue but what Thank is there you. to check that's my thing what is there to check when it's Cardi B versus Azalea Banks let's be real I mean for me it's like everybody said they want real then they get real and they want to critique the fuck out of it it's like do you want your version of real do you want to filter real or do you want me as I am Mm -hmm. and like when I would see posts from Cardi B about how she hates how the fame is like making her feel away Mm -hmm. before she could do whatever she want move how she wanted and first it made her change her teeth and she always said I'll never fix my teeth because this is me like she been half bad yeah. Cardi B was getting money as a stripper yeah. so like she could have been fixed her teeth but I just feel like she's slowly kind of like getting that pressure you know what mm-hmm. I mean and like I don't know it just makes me feel away. I mean her fixing her teeth wasn't a bad thing I'm not saying it's a bad thing it's just an example of giving in the pressures right because she been on and she had millions of followers on Instagram we just said that with the camera right in her face with her messed up teeth I like don't... putting it out to millions of people and she never found a reason to change it until people just kept bashing her. she said like they kept talking about my damn teeth so i was like fuck it let me fix it that's pressure she didn't say i fixed it because i can bite cheeseburgers better she said y'all kept talking about my shit what? don't just make it because you're trying to look like she ain't been a pressure like she uh-huh. changed her teeth because people were talking about her teeth so i don't want to become okay. oh you stupid you stupid you stupid and now uh-huh. she's like damn i'm gonna stop doing interviews you know what i'm saying like i don't yeah. want her to go into a shell because i love the authenticity of cardi b you know yeah but I feel like that's why she suspended or deleted her her Instagram because you have to think this is a lot of pressure for anybody to be under on top of the fact that she's however many months pregnant at this point and mm-hmm. she's ready to pop it any time now yeah she doesn't need to be under that type she's of stress doing so I don't shows, humping the ground at uh, <laughs> Coachella <laughs> humping the air actually so no. I don't blame her <laughs> no that I, I wasn't rocking with but. I was a little perturbed but that's the thing like a person who was authentic, authentically themselves you're not gonna rock with 100% of what they do and say some shit is gonna be like okay girl that was too much and when I saw her pregnant all white pig toe wearing so <laughs> humping the air I'm like you know what that's just Cardi B reminding her I'm fucking Cardi B so I'm gonna do a lot of shit y'all with but then I'm gonna do some shit that's gonna make yeah. you be like what the fuck and that's what that was so she gotta she just gotta stay true to herself for you right. to not lose your mind and go insane like a lot of these celebrities mm-hmm. are you have to remember where the hell you come from and stay grounded 
Right. Another point I just wanted to point out in Cardi B's clap back to the, all the foolery and fuckery and hateful shit that Azalea said on The Breakfast Club. Um, she said, uh, and because I laugh a little bit harder or talk a little louder doesn't make me a caricature. You think you're advocating for women and you're doing the opposite. I pray you find peace in your own heart and reason in your own mind. Pray for your own success before you pray for the downfall of others. And for me, it's like, we know Cardi B got a mouth on her. She could have mm-hmm. went completely berserk. She addressed her before that because it's like three paragraphs before she got to that point. But it's true. It's like, just because she lives out loud. Like she said, I laugh loud. My mouth is big. I talk loud. Like she yeah. just has a loud, big personality. And again, let's go back to it. That's why people fall in love with her as a, as a character. So... I don't know, but Azalea just need to sit the fuck down. She just mad because she probably been working her ass off, probably fucking people, doing all kind of stuff trying to get this glow up. I'm just <laughs> what? What? Why would you say that about oh another sister? Lord. I mean, I'm just saying how the industry goes. I ain't saying she doing it. I just feel like there's some hatefulness, and I'm just trying to reason like, why are you? Every, anybody who hates Cardi B is just what's wrong with you? You know what I mean? And for her to call that girl a rat, like fuck what she's a rat, like what? Yeah. So I feel like she got to be hateful. Her glow up, this girl. As far as entertainment industry goes, she blew the fuck up and she's still blowing up. And mm-hmm. now she got the man. Now she got baby. Like, it's like her glow up continues. And here goes Zelda getting blackballed every six months because she'll know how to shut the fuck up. So I'm like, <laughs> what else could it be? You know what I mean? I'm assuming I, I'm not claiming to know shit about Zelda. I never met her before. I don't even like her music. But it's just like, um, y'all know I'm pro black woman. Y'all listen to the show. Y'all know where I usually come from. But I just hate a hateful bitch. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, if you got some bad shit to say, okay. But don't make it your whole entire platform trolling. Like, what did you say at the beginning of the show? All you really know her for is her trolling. Right. Right? That's what I know her for. If you're going to troll somebody, troll the clear people. Troll Obama. I mean, oh, Lord. Troll Trump. Troll. No, you said that right. Troll Obama. (laughs) Go ahead. Lord. You know what I mean? Troll the shit that we all, not everybody got to agree with you, but troll some shit that's like trollable. Not Cardi B. Come on. And that's my skill. (laughs) <laughs> I'm very passionate about this I seriously know. like come on y'all we gotta do better something I'm passionate about though Ah, shit you know shout out to my to my black men out there you know we, we under attack as always oh, yeah. you feel me always from all angles <laughs> uh, but you know I we did a show last week and we talked about you know the whole me too times up shit mm-hmm. and you know what I thought things were going and I, I hate to be the the no, the Negro okay. dominant. No, because you've been table. waiting to you rub it. Well, I, 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 just, I don't like it. to rub things in people's faces, yes, but I do, do like to let them know that I'm right. So <laughs> when it comes to this Chris Brown shit, I just I just wanted to point out the fact that I was right. You feel me? How are you right, Ribbon? Because now they got Chris Brown. They they trying to do a little lawsuit for a little for a little rape allegation of somebody else that we didn't even. Yeah, and it's kind of so. funny too because our, our show you know we had a listener call in about oral sex now we have this person talking yeah. about she was forced to give oral sex to some female this at Chris Brown party and now they're trying to get at Chris Brown so I you know so <laughs> pretty much what happened <laughs> <laughs> what happened Bree? so first of all it's this lady we don't know who she is where she comes from because she's a filing this lawsuit or she's pretty much on the media right now anonymous um, but she alleges that she was in prison in Chris Brown's home and raped by his friend, who is a rapper that goes by the name of Young Lo. Can we pause and just say that they were at a nightclub and she got invited to the after party after the nightclub? Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> so she got invited to this after party at the nightclub or after. After the nightclub, this after party was supposedly at um, his uh, a studio. Okay. So her and a friend... Um, this happened back February of 2017, so this is not even recent, guys. Oh, like, no. February 2017, a whole year and some change ago. Mm-hmm. Okay? They were invited back to the studio by a friend. When they got there, their friend, um, Young Lo, took their phones before entering the studio, and she said that that sent red flags instantly. First That's off, normal. for anybody who's been anywhere with any type of celebrities, big names, anything... When they're partying, they don't want cameras and stuff all in their face. I'm surprised they have the Folks sign of NDA. Who all they're right. Exactly. They probably did. So they always take phones. Yeah. So, bitch, this is nothing new. Anyways, oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> before they left, um, before they left the studio, they said that um, they she said that they were forced to go to Chris Brown's home. First of all, I don't know how. Yeah, but so okay. they got kidnapped. She got kidnapped. She was kidnapped. Okay. Okay. She grown as fuck. It's 4 a.m. What the fuck she was mean? forced to go back to Chris Brown's home, her, her friend, and then his friends. 
when she was there, of course, instantly in my mind, I'm like, okay, bitch, why did you try to leave? Like, where did she trying to fight? Guys, she thought she was going to jump on some Chris Breeze. What it penis. says is that she didn't think she could leave because the property was gated. Bitch! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, but did you see the part where it says um, the singer handed each female a clear pill filled with white powder instructed them to take it and have a good time. I did not see that. So yeah. he forced it in their mouth too? No! And forced them to swallow No! Well. It's party drugs. She probably was like, okay! And popped it. But at this point, she's supposedly so scared because she, she was forced to this house without her I'm phone just... and was held on a gated property. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted by y'all to even insinuate that this young lady was asking for this. No, I didn't say no, no, that. No, 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 no. I didn't know what that was. You said, said, no, 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 no. You said, you you said it was, it's, 4 a, it's 4 a.m. What did she expect? Now, when I say that shit, <laughs> I didn't say that what when she black expect. men say that, I didn't say what it's, oh my God, y'all say saying she that she was She should have known they was asking for that pussy when she got it. Guys, just to prove this part, we're going to go ahead and run the tape back here. Yes, that's not what I said. So, All right, so, yeah, so it's four a.m. Had... What do you expect? I didn't say what do you expect. Okay. Like I said, we're gonna just run that tape back here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> because y'all pull the bar back and see if that's what the fuck I said. <laughs> so what I said was, well, what I meant to imply was mm-hmm. she had multiple moments to be like nah I want to beat him but I ain't trying to do all this like it's one when you got in the car it's one when you got to the house it's one when you went upstairs like it's so many moments literally to be like I'm out you know what I mean and I'm sure with Chris Brown all the shit he's gone through he probably he may talk shit but he gonna let your ass go I would think if he got a half a brain or at least his entourage is gonna be like we don't need these problems white girl red flag bye I would think so right so to me and the shit this a year and change later and Ray Man did say it. It's like the Me Too movement. They're like, oh shit, now we. Oh shit, I got Ray too. Oh, oh shit, I got I got touched twenty years ago at a party. Now, yeah. um, <laughs> now while uh, uh, I, apparently, I can't. okay, so apparently she was forced to perform oral sex, and um, they on Young Logo on right. on the friend Young Logo, apparently, yeah. and um, and they Shout also molested her. Doesn't say how they many molested years. her. How it's, old is she? I. I Anonymous. You can't get molested <laughs> after 18. I don't But okay, so this is the part that takes the cake. So apparently they gave her gave her the phone back so she could leave, dip, do whatever she was gonna do. Okay. It says that she called her ride share or used the ride share app, so Uber and or Lyft. Um and was waiting for her ride. While she was ra- waiting for her ride, she was then racing in. She was raped while waiting for her ride. Wait, but God. so they say that, and all this shit is alleged because we don't fuck. But did yeah, Chris we Brown do any of this? Did she say no, that's the whole thing. Okay, young well, Low is, yeah, is okay. a dude. A, what it says is she wanted to meet Young Low and Brown. Of course, Brown probably wasn't even in the fucking picture because that's his friend. Ain't gonna exactly. Him there. So, but they're saying that they pushed a couch in front of the door. Mm-hmm. So, barricaded them in the and they're room. saying once they were trapped inside, loud music and pornography really? were played, and all the women in the room were instructed to, to take their clothes off. Meaning it was a bunch of women, not just them. They made it seem like it's just like not that multiples better, but it wasn't just like you locked in a room and a nigga mm-hmm. like giving your ass. So um, <laughs> take their clothes off. Sorry, y'all. It's and engage in sexual ac- activity. And then it says when Jane Doe refused, one of Brown's female friends, not Chris Brown, who was ministrating at the time, is um, what I read. <laughs> At what point? At what point was Chris Brown? He wasn't. Gang he was raping never women. There. Wait, you, can't let me fin- you didn't let me finish. It says, <coughs> "Excuse me." Chris Brown's female friend grabbed her <coughs> and forced her to basically give head to old boy. What? I can't. <coughs> I, it's just so many things in this story that's not adding up. It's completely fishy. Like. Why? Just leave him alone. For the first time <coughs> in a long time, Chris Brown has managed to stay out of any tri- type of serious heat, any type of serious trouble. Ever since <coughs> everything happened back before with his whole probation and everything, he has his daughter, and he's been so hell bent and focused on her. Like nobody has time for negativity. Let the man live. I'm just glad that y'all are, are saying all these things, <coughs> and not me. I just. I, I'm proud of y'all for you're being, proud of us for being I, real. No one's sitting here trying to. No one's trying to victim bash. No one's trying to do any that any of that. We're just saying sometimes some things just don't add up. 
that up. Right. Stop targeting our men. That's it. Too. It's, you know, it's people, it's an individual case. It's an individual cases. But I missed the part when it said um, she alleges the woman who was menstruating also sat on her face. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Not bloody. No. Okay. <laughs> That's disgusting. Mm. That's disgusting. And then it says, then they let her leave to wash the blood off her face. <clears throat> but once separated from the others, that's not funny. He allegedly raped her. So after all this, then the rape happened. I I just need to see um, the paperwork, <clears throat> the documents. And she used her phone for the ride share in the laundry room. Fuck. And then was raped again. This yeah. too much. So so my question is: Is she doing any criminal? Lawsuit, uh, a criminal case is being brought up for uh, Young Low or whoever. Well, it's we just doing. It's are we just getting Chris straight to, to the point of doing a civil lawsuit? Well, that's what I was saying. So I really want to see these court documents. Who all's listed on this on this lawsuit? Because okay, yes, it may have been his home. Maybe that's he it. may have been hosting that's whatever. That's it. But he didn't stick his dick in you, bitch. Like, why is his name tied to this shit? Well, we know why, but I'm just, sorry. And you know what? Again, we're not discounting anybody's experience that have actually had some shit like this happen because, you know, it happens. But I just feel like a year later, and then you had so many moments to be like, nah, I'm straight. Like, what? Like, So if something happens at your home, <clears throat> and you're not there, or maybe you're there and somebody do some shit, you're responsible. So, you know, shout out to the Airbnb sisters who had the Airbnb popping and they got the police called on them because they didn't wait. Wow, Marla, oh, I, think the, I think the Airbnb, Airbnb of owner should get should get prosecuted as well for yeah that. you see how she co-signed the bullshit and was like oh if only they Wait, had spoken so what, she exactly responsible to what, it, what exactly happened you didn't hear about the no. black people well it happened to be Bob Marley's granddaughter so she fucked up oh word yes and she's that. suing okay. the fuck out of them yeah, but sure. she thought it was just some random black people that mm-hmm. just had her Airbnb and apparently how the story goes is um the neighbor spoke and they didn't speak back, and that made the neighbors think, oh, these must be criminals. And so when the police were calling and everything, they tried to say, well, it's not like we drew our guns. And then the, the owner of the property that rented out the Airbnb was like, well, if they would have just spoken back, we could have avoided this situation. What? Bitch, what? Bitch, I don't have to speak to you, first of all. I right. can mean motherfucker out of you and keep my little black ass walking across the street right. if I want to. I wish you would. I love, But I love the fact that this is actually somebody that has some pull and some power. Because from what I hear, she's suing the fuck out of them. So. Uh, and where did this happen? In California somewhere. Mm, of course. Yeah. Oh, the liberal state. Yeah. I'm just gonna let that ride. <laughs> that shit I'm just gonna let enough. it ride. Like, why you know, do white people like Crystal on the read talked about this? Like, they always need us to do some shit to make them feel comfortable. Like, oh, you should have just spoke back. How many times we speak to y'all asses and y'all don't speak back? And, and y'all still call the invisible, right? Thank you. We sleeping on benches and in, in yell. Right. And we, we students there and we getting police called on us. Right. So, all right you. And what Crystal said was, I could see if they was like in the window peeping or doing. They had exactly. they had luggage coming out coming of the into home, the home or coming out wherever they're going. And it's like this is I, this is some white kids. You'd be like, oh, they're here on spring break. You like it wouldn't be nothing. No, no, because it's a group of black kids. It might be a nice, nice house. house. Mm-hmm. Then you're assuming that somebody's breaking in. You Wasn't know? it in Santa? Mon- I think it was in Santa Monica. That's I don't know. It was Santa Monica on the west side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's a affluent area. Fuckery happens yeah. everywhere. Whatever. Mm, so, um, as usual, Brie normally comes in with our listener question, and she has one. Hopefully, it's not the same foolery that we get all the way love her questions. So, Brie, what we on this week? No, today we're going to go a little easy. You know, we normally <laughs> get a lot of um, sex questions, relationship questions, cool which is cool. <laughs> like, those are literally my favorite ones. I get super, super hype about it. But oh, I'm kind of hype about this one because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of hype about this topic because it is something that I feel like we all go through on a day to day basis, and it's something that we can connect to. And uh, I feel I feel this girl's pain. Like, let's just be real. Okay, what's she saying? All right. So um, it says, "Hi guys, my name is Marissa. I am 26 years old, and I currently work in customer service. I enjoy what I do, but lately I've been dreading coming to work because of the people I work with." I am in a fairly small department with mostly women where I am the youngest by at least 10 years. I thought working with an age group that I would consider mature would place me in a professional work environment, but it has been everything but. 
time. From constant pettiness and office mm-hmm. drama to being chased down in the parking lot by a disgruntled employee over <laughs> a simple disagreement regarding company policy. Chased down. Exactly. Unfortunately, going to management is always a hit or miss, and I feel as though I'm only placing a target on my back. I need my job, but I need my mental sanity as well. Um, what are some tips you guys can give me to cope with the madness while I look for a better position? Oh, Girl, I feel your pain. <laughs> so they old, they petty, and they gossipy, and they're immature. Okay, that's a lot. I mean, just look at your grandmamas. They talk a lot of gossip. All Don't do that. Why Don't do you that immediately? My grandma is not in immature that. and petty and all Thank that shit. Thank you. The only thing she got in common with them is the age, maybe. Don't do that. I said a lot. I didn't say y'all's. Anyways, Marissa, I feel your pain because I've also been in a similar situation. And yes, when you think that you're dealing with 40, 50, 60 year old women, you're thinking, okay, we can go to work, get some Mm -hmm. business done, go home and I can leave work at work. Mm -hmm. But no. (laughs) <laughs> older women can be no. the pettiest people and it makes no sense they like, got, I don't understand <laughs> yes they got they got that old school they, back in the 50s 60s petty. Like, I, don't <laughs> like, I don't I mean they disgruntled they bitter they've been working all their fucking life they probably close mm-hmm. to social security and you know, don't every every few years they kick Social Security back, so every few years they know they got to work a little more. And so. you notice in custom when dealing with customer service, the angriest employees are usually the ones that have been there the longest. Mm-hmm. They're usually the ones that have been there 10, 15, 20 years, and they just mad. Like, yeah. what you mad about? If you didn't want to be there, you had to be there. Yeah. yeah I mean, obviously they had to be there because they no, were there. No, they didn't have to be there. It's choice. always another choice, especially if you're depending on what area you're in. Yeah. There's always another choice. Yeah, and that's how why they feel that way because they feel like they don't have a it's choice. It's too late for the stripper pole. They, they ain't <laughs> well, got, yeah, no, they ain't got too, too many options. It's too late for them now that they, okay. they're already invested. They could they work at a bingo hall. They could Walmart. They pussy at bingo? No, what? Okay. That's what they do when they go to bingo night? Who the hell shaking ass in the bingo hall? No. no. What? Listen, these women ain't got right, too many options. Right, is this the only Listen. place your mind goes? So no. I hope you That's the only bargaining at the beginning of the segment, we were gonna have a good, we were gonna have a good wholesome conversation, and here goes Ray Man showing his ass. He got, you know what? He got to play C Rich right now. I feel like that's oh yes. God. Like he didn't feel the spirit of C Rich in his trolling, so he had to throw some C Rich in there. Try to see Rich, we miss you, but come on, bro. Hey, Ain't nobody was, selling cooch at the bingo hall. Listen, if they are we not concerned. Mama did. No, I've no. been to the bingo hall and they don't do that. Listen, maybe when they call out them numbers, it's actually calling <laughs> <laughs> and prices instead of checking it out. Like, all right, Miss Betty, you can come on down. <laughs> B25, that's really Betty for 25. Listen, they get it cracking in the, in the senior home. They no. don't. Oh. No, but like, seriously, I read an article about how, like, the highest rate of um, STDs was the elderly. Yeah, Clemente is yeah, a motherfucker. And yeah, it's like all of the shit. Like, shout so they be in that just fucking. Hey, man, shout out to Mechanicsville. I just seen some shit. <laughs> I done seen some old players come through with some 20 olds and oh they leave God. with a Lexus and a handful of money, you dig? I, I pop my collar to y'all, man. You I know, ain't popping shit. Yeah, I'm not popping anything. Work, bro worked 50 years for Coca-Cola. He earned that pussy. What? You know what? <laughs> Back to Marissa. Thank you. Um, Someone with common sense at this table. God damn. Shut up. You know what? Okay. <laughs> So, Marissa, um, I feel you, especially when certain environments, when you like in close quarters, like I had a situation where I was in training and it was a very intimate environment, meaning that you were elbow to elbow with people all day, um, like eight hours a day. And it was a bunch of strong personalities, including my own. And after a while, it became draining. So it wasn't so much the old folks, although we did find out some of the old folks in our training did become a little petty. Uh, but but come, they, they came there that way. They exposed themselves. As petty. <laughs> but um, you just have to, like, I guess, know how to block stuff out for one. Like, you got to remember what you're there for. It's cool if you can be social with your coworkers, but we hit a work, you know. So try and block it out as much as you can. Don't be involved in the conversation. When you see the conversation turning from work to, like, somebody's attire or somebody's body older or somebody's whatever so you don't join in those conversations and i'm not gonna lie in private but not in public like if it's like my friend like we real cool we cool uh-huh. in the rest of the training class or or work 
enforced or whatever, then yeah, I might be like, girl, did you? But that's because I trust you and I'm not bashing her in front of like a group of people. But if it's like a crowd of us, I'm not going to be like, oh, did you see your girl? Like, you know, like, yeah. no, because okay. that's a whole different yeah. like energy. You open me. yourself up for HR problems doing shit like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, girl, just stay focused. Um, Also, plan B and C. Like, put your head down, look for other options, but just know no matter where you are, whether it's customer service or like, you know, being a big wig or whatever you do, you always going to have an environment that you're going to have to learn how to control. You know what I mean? Some people mm-hmm. around you that's going to do stuff you don't like, say stuff you don't like, be ways that you don't like, worse, you know, like everything that's just going to be maybe against what you prefer, but you can't think about changing them. You got to think about changing yourself, whether it's putting up barriers or just, you know, remaining focused. That's my two cents. So you block people out, you know, um, yeah, because, but for me, like, I'm hypersensitive to my environment, so I have to be selective in, like, what I pay attention to. So, like, when I fuck with you, I really fuck with you. I notice everything about you. I know your energy, this, this, that. Mm-hmm. But if I don't, it's a complete opposite. Like, and people have, and y'all know, people have felt a way because they felt yeah. like because, but it's like, I really just don't see you. And I think that's, like, a protective me- mechanism for me because I'm so hypersensitive and I soak in the shit around me that I do pay attention to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if I ain't fucking with you, then I'm just not. What right you know, now? It's crazy because I told you a while back you were sensitive and you say you've never heard that before. No, you call me sensitive in a different context. You call me sensitive like wimpy cry, like I... feelings. Are, oh, that's my perception of what you were calling me. So that's why I bucked against that. I well, that you me. are a little sensitive in, in terms of emotionally as well, but we ain't going to get into that. Go ahead. Make this oh my God. <laughs> um, but I'm saying I'm hypersensitive in the way of like everything. Like, mm-hmm. If you smell something, I smell it more. If you feel something, I feel it more. If it's bright to you, it's brighter to me. It's literally like a now it's like a condition, but it's a thing. Like some of us are hypersensitive in all their senses, mm-hmm. and that's me. So it goes with everything. Can you everything. hear dead people? No, I'm saying like. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all can so saw our faces <laughs> right now, like he is this ignorant. Is not the same Why? We'll do a whole other sh- show about <laughs> that stuff. But yeah, so you, you like months. experience supernatural and shit like that before? I think we all do. It's just whether you open to it or not. But that's another show. Hey, it's what I, you I recognize it as. Do you think it's just random shit? Because I you? feel like I have experienced some supernatural shit like um, sleep paralysis and stuff. Oh, we're gonna get into that one. We'll do a whole we'll show. Do a whole show on that. But yeah, we're we're gonna talk about that. But right time, now it's but... Mental Health Awareness Month, so we're trying to help yes. folks get on their straight and narrow. So uh, with I was just doing break, a mental check because if a motherfucker hear people voices, anyway, I just gotta make wait, sure. Wait, but Ray, you didn't have anything for Marissa? Yeah, because you're because you seem like you're such a positive person sometimes, seem and like it. um, sometimes, <laughs> and you meditate very often. So how do you cope with work related? stresses and dealing with the workplace. I don't take any of it serious. I don't... You don't? No, I don't. You see that. When you say you don't take it serious, do you know when you leave work at work? I leave work at work, but also, like, I have a bigger... When I'm at work, I don't really... Meaning on the man's job. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. The white man's job is what he's referring to. Yeah, I don't don't take it serious in terms of, like, some people, they get really attached. Like, if you work in customer service, you may be answering phone calls. Mm -hmm. You know, you're allowing people people. into your space. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're on the phone with somebody, you're exchanging energy with Mm -hmm. them. So, I'm I'm cognizant of that. I know, okay, well, you know, I, I know whatever this person is talking about. I don't want them to interrupt whatever I got going on in my mood. So, most of the time, I keep the same demeanor the whole day on the phone. Regardless, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm not gonna change how I'm acting. Now, if you say some stupid shit that just completely throw me off, then I understand. But for me, it's like I don't know. Like th- it's not my purpose. If it's not my purpose, then I don't really take you it serious. I just yeah, I don't get too invested in this shit. It's a paycheck. So what you need to do is just find a way out. If it's really like that. Then you should the time that you're working when you have to do certain tasks do that shit. But in between time, try to find ways to mm-hmm. get yourself out of that situation so you can be in a better environment. Right. If you just want to work for somebody for the rest of your life, then you are gonna deal with this. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta deal with other how people. To master it. Yeah, yeah. So if if that's the case, and I'm not knocking you if you everybody can't be a business owner, so I'm not knocking that. But if you're gonna work for somebody for the rest of your life, you have to understand that. You know, you're not going to be controlling whoever your employees are. You just got to learn how to manage people. So Amen. I would suggest looking up uh, 
the seven habits of successful people. Mm-hmm. You know, try to try to learn how to deal with people. Uh, I would definitely say one hack, one psychology hack you can use. You know, always smile, make eye contact, and nod your head when you want a positive response from people. You know, and you know, little shit, little shit like that. Yeah, for somebody that don't be giving a fuck, you definitely got the keys. What you mean? You literally went from saying. I'm not invested. I don't care to, but this is how you do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is how you manage through the matrix. I I, I can show you how to manage the matrix, Ooh, but you need to get up out of there too. Managing through the matrix. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much in a nutshell, Marissa. <laughs> the only thing that I can give you because I trust me, I've been in your shoes and I corrected my problem. <laughs> yes, <I'm laughs> no, 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 no. Just quitting. Just quitting that. the job is not the option if you. No, 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 no. I was damn. No. Thank you. Just me out. First of all, you just put me out there. That's really not did. at all what I was gonna say okay. at all. Thank okay. you, Ray. Go ahead. All I was gonna say, Marissa, <laughs> is stay positive and don't feel in, feed into the drama. Don't feed into the bullshit. When you see things going left over here, you go right. Like you, you just stay out of it and keep your head down. Like I said, until. <laughs> You find your outlet. If right now you're in the place where you're searching for a better position, whether it's within that company or within elsewhere, so another company or something dealing with something completely different, not even dealing with customer service. While you're waiting on that or while you're working and like I said, working, not waiting because mm-hmm. you ain't going to get nowhere like that. Just waiting. yeah. Exactly. But while you're working on that, find you an outlet. Like, find you something that takes you from that space. Like, even if it's something that you don't do while you're at work, while you're at home, start sewing. Start photography. Like, <laughs> find you a hobby that takes you to another space away from home, That's away from old. work. Where you are, so- I mean, anybody. Like, <laughs> even, like, if she likes clothes and stuff and she's find good with sewing, like, just find your thing. Like, you, your thing. Yeah. you can shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 we have to deal with work stresses as I'm dealing with now from this uh, right here. <laughs> Girl, find you an outlet. That's all I got to say. And stay positive. Listen, go to HR. Huh. Stop. Don't play but games like with it. But like she said, HR sometimes the hit or miss. And she's yeah, putting the on her on her Go to HR and put that shit on a file, especially if it's a, a, a other. Put that shit in the file every yeah, time because they got a, right. they got an HR file on your ass. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, if they got a problem with you like that and you dealing with them, they gonna have an HR but file. But being chased in the parking lot, like they don't have. Yeah, to I do really, it. I really need um, no why more intel <laughs> on that. Like who, who, who chased you down in the parking lot for what reason? <laughs> what Girl, what, man? What the, who, what that happened? Who you done pissed off? Yeah, I don't know. That's Just a bit also, pissed. don't get into no type. They be trying to trick you at the job, man. They'll get you to, hey, what about that OJ uh, verdict? What you think about? No, don't don't answer. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> comment. No, don't answer nothing about politics, social issue, none of that shit. Don't talk about none of it. Keep don't let them know. Yeah, keep that to yourself. All right. Well, that's a pretty um, great segue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so as you guys know, it's Health Mental Health Awareness Month, month of May, and we just want to, you know, highlight different things about mental health each show, and we wanted to talk about how to avoid or remedy burnout, meaning like when you just feel like you're on that wheel, or you know, you just over it, and either how to not get to that place, or when you are at that place of burnout or whatever you identify it as, how do you get out of it? And I know I was contemplating, and I have a few ways of how I do so. But Raven, surprisingly, you've been not so vocal this show, so I'd what like to mean? know. I'm always laid back on the show, you a man. Listen. <laughs> so it depends on what you mean. Um, what you mean what I mean? Why are you dissect it? Nah, because there's there's different. So if you're burnt out because you're you're just expending all this energy and you mm-hmm. may not and you need some time or you feel like you're just overworking yourself trying to get simple tasks done, mm-hmm. the best technique I will give you is the Pomodoro technique. Definitely do that. Uh, so that what that entails, if you don't know what it What's is, what's the name of the technique? Pomodoro. Pomodoro technique. Basically, you're spending 20 minutes or 25 minutes doing just one task, just knocking out that task, and you're going to take a five-minute break, and then you're going to jump back into it and do another 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and take another break for five minutes. And you want to do that three straight times until you get to the fourth break. Then on the fourth break, you're going to take a long break, either 10, 15 minutes. And after you've done that, you do that for about four cycles. 
you'll see that you got most of your work done for the day. So that's the way of avoiding burnout. That's that's the best way to avoid burnout. What about if you're already burnt out? How do you get out of it? So if you're already burnt out, meditation, okay. you know, that's always key. Uh, just spending some quiet time to relax, get your mind off. What you want to do is try to silence the mind so you're not, you have too much going on, too much brain activity can bring about just anxiety and stress from nowhere. Just overworking the brain. So you have to mm-hmm. stay quiet for a minute. Also, exercise, man. I know these these are like, I know they sound cliche, but it's actually like, it's just the science behind it. You want to exercise as much as you can. Mm-hmm. So Those endorphins. You dig? So whether that's you you take a break away for 20 minutes of the day, do push-ups, sit-ups, whatever, or you call your jump off real quick. And get that oh, cardio no, session okay. in. Just you just want to make thought. sure that you want to make sure that you're taking <laughs> just a break. Felt real about ten, fifteen. Most of us only got about fifteen good minutes in us. So just take oh your ten, fifteen God. in there, oh, and you know you're gonna get your cardio in. You dig? And then um, just know that you know stagnation or the lack of progress is always the key behind you know most depression, most anxiety. Mm-hmm. So you want to try to get the mind going. Whether that's watching you know some YouTube, take your mind off real quick, watch some YouTube clips. Or read. I know people don't do that no more, but maybe read a little bit, and you'll be straight, man. And I got some more techniques, but I want to know what y'all just kind of what y'all. Just go to Raven's Instagram. You know Twitter. what I'm saying? <laughs> just go to my Instagram, and you'll be straight. Go ahead. Personally, for me, um, how I cope or avoid burnout is a change of environment. Honestly, because I work from home now, and between working with my hands a lot and then sitting in front of the computer for hours on end, it's exhausting. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times I like to open my windows and let some fresh air in, or just like I said, complete change of scenery. Go outside for a walk. Go to the store. So nature does do, it for you. Like do yeah. something. Just literally changing the environment because sitting in your office, sitting in your cubicle, or whatever. Mm-hmm. For 10 hours a day, it's, it's going to be mentally draining. It's, it's going to stress you out. You have to get up, walk around, it's get active, too. and move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a major key, man. Yeah. I'm glad you said it's that. It's helped me a lot. Nature, being in nature just itself just kind of puts you in a different mind state. It relaxes you a little more. Well, aside from this Atlanta pollen, you have a damn allergy. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're you know dying yeah, right but, now. <laughs> you know, you but you're gonna be stressed, right? Yeah, you're not gonna be stressed, but you know, as far as you know, just staying active or whatnot, you you definitely want to try to take a walk at some point, get, change your the scenery. Do not sit in front of a computer for hours on end. Mm-hmm. You sitting in front of a screen that's basically the sun. You just zapping. Yeah, yeah, it's zapping all your energy, and that's another key why corporations keep you in the office from nine to five that's your best time your most productive time of the day Mm -hmm. so they're taking all the energy from you you don't have nothing to give to yourself just a you know a little something to marissa just so you get your entrepreneur spirits up but can i give my go ahead okay Uh, okay, go ahead my bad (laughs) (laughs) so for me um some of the ways that i think is helpful in avoiding burnout is notice the signs like for me I realized that I wasn't paying attention to myself. I would go from like zero to a hundred and be like, how did I get here? Like mm-hmm. from super energetic to, oh my God, like I just want to unplug and I want to talk to nobody. And I'm like, okay, I need to start paying attention to what am I feeling right before I get burned out? Yeah. You know what I mean? Am I short tempered? Am I eating a lot? Like, you know what I'm saying? We all have our signs that let you know, okay, you need to back it up. You need to pace it. You know yeah. what I mean? So I think yeah. paying attention to the signs of your own mental and physical state it may sound real heavy and deep but i promise you it's not it's literally just about being aware of yourself and Mm -hmm. you know okay when i do this or i don't do this or i feel this way it's about to be over so you learn corrective action and for me i was thinking about um how to remedy it because sometimes you're already there and you're like shit i gotta get out of this i got shit to do life goes on and for me it's know your thing right so i'm a big music head so i know if i put on certain songs or a certain playlist yeah in like a quiet room or like one second bubble bath like, you have to know what your thing is. Like, when all those spells, I could do this shit and it'll get me right. Or at least alleviate my state. You know what I mean? Like, you may not be back to 100, but you're not in that tight, tension, anxiety-filled place. So, know your thing, whether it's music, exercise, um, you know, stuff that can help you escape. <laughs> and unplug. Just know your thing. You know what I mean? And don't let anybody tell you that it's good or bad. Whatever your thing is that helps you to be able to stay on track. And, you know, to get shit done and optimize your own uh, health and, like, productivity, then do that shit. I feel all that. <laughs> travel. Travel, 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 man. Um, 
that helps you burn out. Okay, that's true. Absolutely. Chasing that's why people yeah. Yeah. learning when to stop, unplug, and just get away. Man, rich people take a lot of vacations for a reason, man. You got to be able to disconnect from all the shit sometimes and really just go to somewhere new where you have to. If you, I don't, I don't know if y'all, any of y'all ever done this, but I want you to try some real quick. You know, if you ever for the, you know, next weekend, you know, when you go out, leave your phone at home. You did, and I want you to just pay attention to everything around you and just soak in being synchroni- synchronicity with your environment and really see the difference. Because I've, I've seen times where I've been on the phone for you know most of the time that I'm out. And it's like I never left home. Mm-hmm. Like it just shit. Pat you time passed. Work, yeah. I never left you're work. Not in the moment. Yeah. So just leave your phone real quick. Mm-hmm. Don't have no outside distractions and just try to vibe with the, with your surroundings. And you'll find, you know, it's a, it's an interesting, you know, experience. And it's crazy that we have to be intentional about that now, right? Yeah. Like just two or three decades ago, that was the norm. Mm-hmm. Like if you outside, you outside. If you home, with your you home. Homies, home. And that's it. You kicking it with the people that's around you. You remember when you just go out with your friends mm-hmm. when you was like 12, just 13. Just run the block. Run around yeah. the block. You wouldn't even think about no right. phone. You don't care on what's going bikes. on. On your bikes. Where do you even put their phone at? Do they ride bikes anymore? Like, no. <laughs> no I don't see no bikes. <laughs> they inside on YouTube watching other they people do. They playing video playing games. Kickball. Where would you Fortnite. Put your phone they at? playing Fortnite, you day online. Yeah. So it's like, people it was don't nice even, to be in the moment. people don't really be in the in nature no more. And that's mm-hmm. like, that's a major thing, man. Your, your connection with the sun is that important, man, to where they keep you out of that motherfucker. Not eight hours a day, man. You gotta, you gotta get some sunlight. If you ever been depressed, is and you just been sitting. I don't know if you ever sat inside for like three, four days at a time. When you're you just sitting, they fucking, tell you to go outside. Yeah, you yeah. gotta go outside at mm-hmm. some point, man. You gotta enjoy the sun. You can feel it. it energize you. Like I was really sickly as a child, and my dad is like really into home- homeopathic stuff and like mm-hmm. natural remedies. And when I would be sickly, like he just said indoors, and I couldn't go outside for four or five days, he would literally be like, "Go sit outside." Yeah. And at first, it feels like kind of weird because you've been indoors, but yeah. then you literally can. He was like, "You do some vitamin D." And I used to be like, "This crazy man," but I literally mm-hmm. would feel the sun re-energize me. Yeah, mm-hmm. the sun gives you vitamins. You never have to take vitamins unless you don't get any sunlight or you don't get any exercise. I'm that you may still need some no vitamins. I'm telling you no the sun provides you the vitamins that you need to survive so if I just be outside all day I never need to take vitamins none no you don't alright so your diet you doesn't play a, no. your diet doesn't play a part into that at all your diet will play some part in it but if you if just like vitamin C D whatever you you can get that from the sun you don't have to take the tablets unless you just don't get out all right, so but let's <laughs> spend that much time in the sun too. No, I feel you. We you should all be like, with nature. I mean, I'm gonna still take my vitamins while I go outside now. But I get what you're saying. It's gonna give you what you need without having to down all that shit. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so um, hopefully that was helpful. I know just about everybody I know in Atlanta, even not in Atlanta, like we all are very driven people. Mm-hmm. We have families, we have significant others, we have business businesses, we have goals, we have our own personal shit, you know, and it's just like knowing how to manage your shit like I like what Rayvan said about managing through the matrix like that's real shit because we all live in this matrix Mm -hmm. and knowing how to manage it and when to step back and go harder etc I think that's really um, imperative to success so um, I I forget the name of the French dude that was in the matrix film but if you go back and watch that series no 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 no, no. (laughs) I forget the name there was a French character in there and I forget the name what do you mean what did he do but basically he was I I don't think most people caught it but he was able to survive in the matrix and outside of the matrix and he was like he learned how to balance both oh he talked like slow and like deep oh yeah yeah. so be more like that person (laughs) be that guy we don't know his name (laughs) I forget the name but the actual title that they use for his name is like it's a French king. Somebody gonna find it. They are gonna post it up for me. Yeah. But it means a French king or whatnot. He used so. to speak like oddly slow, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that and that character was kind of showing you like you can manage. That person was in control of both. Mm-hmm. He wasn't just managing. He was in control of both sides. So he understood Look when he was you. in the matrix. He understood when he was outside and was able to control his environment. But you know, yeah, another show. <laughs> All right, well, this was fun. Brianna, we had you for the whole show. I know, I enjoyed you guys. Um, I forgot about Minus, <laughs> I know, right? 
<laughs> see Rich. Let's be real. Love you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> see Rich. We definitely do miss you. Can't wait for you to get back. I believe he'll be gone for a couple of shows, right? Yeah, it's probably, yeah. probably going to be back in like three shows. From yeah. Now. Yeah, but you know, we'll hold it down. We, we, we ain't going to miss you too much. <laughs> Your brother will miss you. That's fine. But yeah, all right. Well, once again, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Show 39, y'all. That's crazy. Crazy. I know. Like episodes. Just, it's been like over a year now. It has so been over a year. Those of y'all who think we new to this, check our iTunes. We ain't new to this. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for listening. That was a long one. <laughs> <laughs> the longest you ever. I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> Man, we out. Peace. Peace.